his dad runs a workout program. His daddy runs a little, little like offshoot of like 21 day fix essentially. Um, but his papa runs a little eating <laughs> disorder. <laughs> God damn it, you can't laugh like that. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you have been here before or hi, welcome if you're new. My name is Mickey, I am a therapist and we talk about therapy things on this channel. Today, we're talking about Paul and Morgan again. <sighs> because they just won't quit, you know? Like they just keep showing up to the internet and it's like hateful, like every time it's hateful. So we are talking about a video that they made called Cosmopolitan Goes There Again this is healthy. If you don't know, um, Cosmopolitan released an issue of their magazine a little while ago, several months ago now, um, with a number of different women on the cover of varying body types, um, one of whom is a lovely human being that I follow on Instagram, whose last name escapes me. One of whom is Jessamine Stanley, who is a lovely human being that I follow on Instagram, who is a fat and body positive um, yoga teacher among other things. And so this caught my attention because they used the version of the cover that had Jessamine on it in their thumbnail. And I was like, mm -hmm, this should be good. It's not, it's bad, it's awful. So we're talking about that today. Before we get into Paul and Morgan's video, if you are new here and you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe and while you're down there, like the video um, and then leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing today. That's it. Okay, let's watch the video. Slide. Slide, baby, slide. Movie magic. Okay, let's watch Paul in his purple pants just spew bullshit out of his mouth. We don't read Cosmo very often. <laughs> Never! <laughs> What's up guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. And today's video, Cosmopolitan Magazine goes there again. You guys know what we're talking about based off of the picture and the thumbnail. Uh. You have an idea. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like our audience probably does not read Cosmo. So well, I get it. Even if you don't read Cosmo, bravo to you. You may have seen this. Two years ago, Cosmopolitan did somewhat of a similar thing. And now they are, they're going there again in the midst of the COVID pandemic, which I think adds another oh, element, oh, another oh. layer, which we'll get to, yeah. All right, but first, before we even get into that, make sure you subscribe, turn that notification. Morgan, it was earlier this morning mm -hmm. that I hopped on Twitter mm -hmm. and saw some people posting about this, the February issue of Cosmopolitan Magazine. I'll pop the cover up here. Three different women on there, and then it appears that these are two pages in the magazine, and it's written here describing the issue, I suppose. 11 women, 11 different bodies. Healthy can be a loaded word, as unique to the person that uses it as a fingerprint. We asked these women to open up about their personal journeys to reclaiming healthy as their own. All right. Opening remarks, Morgan. It's not okay. lost to us that this is a controversial topic. Yes. And we're asking the Lord, we prayed beforehand, like, Lord, give us wisdom, give us sensitivity, but like, we're always going to be raw. We're going to be bold. And we desire for you guys, for all of us to live in more and more freedom. And mm -hmm. oftentimes that's going to push against what the culture is trying to feed us. More freedom in there. I'm going to blow up. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so... First of all, I feel compelled to address that <laughs> Paul says, okay, Morgan, opening remarks, but I'm just gonna like talk right over you real quick. Like, sir, what are you doing? Ugh. The like self-centeredness is astounding every time we watch these videos. Um, the other thing about this that grinds my fucking gears is that they, they will get more into this later, but they have the gall to bring COVID into this as if they are not people who haven't been actively campaigning against the safe and appropriate behavior and guidelines during COVID. Like these are people who are active and vehement anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers, did not social isolate, like just, just refusing to abide by any of the appropriate advice. And we'll get more into it later, but this stuff, pushes my fucking buttons. 
her identity as a son and daughter of the God of the universe yeah. and not in your, your self-image or feels. your feels. Yeah. We love you guys and I'm excited to talk about this topic. I'm a little bit scared, but... Anyway, when I got up this morning and I looked and I saw that, I'm just being honest with you guys, my initial response, it says, this is healthy. And I'm looking at that, Cosmopolitan promoting this, two women that are obviously... Uh, very heavy saying this is healthy and then like we read earlier it said like they're describing what is healthy for them well first off there's hypocrisy because I'm, I'm sure Cosmo has been totally up in arms about the COVID related stuff how we need to be healthy and be safe mm -hmm. and yet they flip the script and they're saying this is healthy this is what healthy can look like I'm, I'm sorry but just again just being real like anyone that's done any research with common sense knows that an obese person that obesity is not as healthy by a long shot is someone who is in shape. And so for- Let's talk about that, shall we? This is my favorite. This shit makes me so fucking angry. Ooh, I'm gonna do my best, y'all. I, <laughs> quick caveat, I sound like a tea kettle. Quick caveat, before we go any further, this type of stuff pushes my fucking buttons for a number of different reasons. The first of which being when people like this who are thin and like straight size and occupy a place of privilege in this world because of that, make commentary videos about people who live in bodies that look like mine as if it's a thought experiment makes me murderously fucking angry. Like it not actually murderously angry, but it's infuriating to me because my lived experience in the actual life that I wake up every day and live isn't theoretical to me. It's real and it's something that I have to live with and be reminded of all the fucking time. And so it is so disrespectful for people like Paul and Morgan to get on the internet and talk about it as if it is like a game, as if it's like a funny, interesting thing to talk about at a party. Like my life and the lives of all of the people who I, I have spent a lot of time and energy and effort educating myself so that I can show up as a therapist to help people work through these issues are not theoretical or experimental or something that you can talk about as a talking point for your YouTube channel. Like it's a fucking game and it pisses me off. Like on a human level, it pisses me off. So I am asking kindly if you are not a person who is willing or able to be respectful of this conversation or this issue i'm asking you kindly please find a different video of mine or find another channel to watch because this is a topic that i will always show up as very human in i do my best to wear my therapist hat here because i'm a therapist hello but when somebody talks about something that affects my real life and that i have a lot of emotional skin in the game it's hard for me to show up as this like unaffected unemotional person and again i'm asking you guys as like subscribers and viewers of this channel to give me a little bit of the benefit of the doubt here, to give me a little bit of room to show up as more of a human here today than solely as a therapist. Because again, this is an issue that affects my human life and my like real ass lived experience. That said, let's talk about the, anyone who's done any amount of research would know that fatties are unhealthy. No, Paul, they wouldn't. I'm gonna link in the description. I'm gonna do the thing that I do when I'm angry about something because someone said something wrong. I'm gonna list like a fucking folders worth of research. Um, I've had <laughs> like no free time in my personal life as of late, but I tell you what, I made fucking time to find relevant research about this topic and it took me almost no time at all, no time at all to find research that fits like, I mean, I've talked before on my channel in the Psych2Go video, but in other videos too, about how it's important for us to look at research with a discerning eye. Not all research is created the same. So I found research that is recent, that is relevant, that is randomized control trial, um, that is unbiased, that is performed by people who don't have a vested financial interest in creating research that looks a certain way. So all of those will be listed in the description that demonstrates for us that diet culture far and away is more harmful and hurtful to people's physical and mental health than being fat is. This is for a number of reasons that we will get into later, but when people say things like this, A, again, this is like a thin person take because you've never had to 
prove to people that you are allowed to fucking exist just the way that you are, but B, it's clear that you've never had to actually put in any thought into the way that your body just shows up because it's just the fucking way that you are. The research paints the opposite picture of what Paul and Morgan are trying to represent here, and it is frustrating again <laughs> because I'm willing to bet that there's no resources or research in their description that shows us the point that they're trying to make. He's just... So, let's, let's watch some more of it. Them trying to feed us this in the midst of a pandemic where they're all up in arms about one side of health and then trying to promote obesity as being healthy, I was thinking to myself, cosmopolitans should be ashamed of themselves. It is shameful in my opinion. It's like, this is what we have come to. Let's talk about that for a minute. A, comparing a pandemic to fatness is not the same. <laughs> fat people are not a pandemic. You can't catch fatness. But the other thing about this is that it's clear that Paul and Morgan, they just said it out loud. They like really said the quiet part out loud. They find fatness to be shameful, which is fucking disgusting and honestly so embarrassing because, I mean, this is not an uncommon take. Lots of people feel this way, but not a lot of people are comfortable enough or bold enough to just come right out and say it. And it is interesting to me that, again, these people feel emboldened to just shame people for their bodies just existing the way that they are without recognizing the negative impact that that has on people's mental and emotional well-being, especially after the the little <laughs> like moment that we got about praying for sensitivity and asking God to help them show up in a compassionate way, and then we're just going to come right out of the gate and say that fatness is shameful. Like, that's not very sensitive. I think your call got lost. This is what we're pushing as healthy, and I'm not saying that a tiny little supermodel should be on a magazine and pushed as this is healthy either, but obesity, it has been proven people with obesity have gotten COVID a lot worse than people who do not struggle with obesity. Mm. I love that we used a screen grab of the CDC website after these people have been actively ignoring the CDC advice for COVID. Because A, I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not gonna weigh in on whether obesity makes COVID worse or better. I don't have enough uh, reliable research to make a call about that one way or the other. For what it's worth, it does seem like the research seems to indicate that a higher weight, I guess. The BMI is fucking bullshit and I hate it, um, but it seems that people who are fatter tend to struggle with more severe COVID symptoms, but we're not really sure why. And I think it's important to honor that causation does not necessarily equal, or correlation does not necessarily equal causation. And again, I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm not gonna weigh in on that issue. However, it is so hilarious to see someone who, again, is like actively defying the CDC's advice about COVID. All of a sudden now we wanna defer to the CDC. Like, why is that? Why all of a sudden are we willing to take the CDC's advice about this issue, but not about not spreading COVID and not killing people? We're about to get to some influencers who have shared these posts on Twitter and some of the replies on their posts. Really interesting discussion. But yeah, what you're saying is there's numerous studies and articles that show that COVID-19, it's more harmful, it's more deadly to people who are obese. It's almost like, like when Paul showed me the cover of that and stuff, I was literally like, is Cosmo like literally trying to kill people off the world? Like that's where my mind went. Conspiracy! Reduce the population. But like literally, that's what I'm thinking. Like why are we pushing all of these things? Why during a pandemic can you go into the grocery and buy all the junk food you can and you can still go to McDonald's during the pandemic, but you can't go to the gym? There's very, why? very <laughs> little emphasis. This is so off the fucking deep end. So off the deep end. It's, it's upsetting. <laughs> it's disgusting. I'm trying so hard to regulate my response to this and to not lose my goddamn mind on camera. But I just, do they, I can't, I can't understand. Like, do they not actually, like Paul and Morgan, if you ever see this video, I'm so deathly curious. Like, please hit me up in my DMs. Do you actually not understand why McDonald's is open during the pandemic, but the gym is not? Because McDonald's is, it's a food service, which is considered essential. But the gym, like you can move your body for free at home always. 
Do people not know? Like, I'm so confused. Do they not understand that that's real? I just am flabbergasted. And also, like, <laughs> the fact that we all of a sudden are, like, concerned about it. Like, this is the thing that thin people do when they want to rail against fatness is they make it seem like they're angry about the obesity epidemic because it's hurting people and we actually we don't want fat people to be sad we don't want to hurt fat people actually it's just fat phobia it's just thinly veiled fat phobia this has nothing to do with the concern for the quality of life of fat people because if it did you wouldn't be out here making a video on your very public and very large platform using words like shameful to describe people who live in bodies like mine on living a healthier lifestyle, eating better, losing weight, like none. strengthening your immune system. All the emphasis, as you guys have seen, is on wear the mask, get the vaccine, stay inside, stay inside, stay six feet apart. So yeah, there's where some of the hypocrisy lies. And in re This is what I'm saying. They are not willing to abide by that CDC advice, but are willing to take the CDC's uh, advice um, about obesity being uh, unhealthy for people with like <sighs> reality obesity is the main cause of America's number one killer which is heart disease and yet all I cannot take anyone seriously who uses screen grabs of Google search results as your sources I'm gonna throw myself on the cliff I just like <sighs> again I'm gonna link some actual fucking research in the description <sighs> but they're, we know what, I'm gonna let them put their foot in their mouth a little bit more and then we're gonna talk about it in a minute. That is ignored and Cosmopolitan is choosing to once again go there just so brazenly, so recklessly. And it's not just reckless, it's, I feel like they, it's, it's purposeful. In many respects, I think it's purposeful. We've talked about this before, the whole self-love movement. I haven't read this book yet, You're Not Enough and That's Okay by Ali B. Stuckey. She talks a lot about the self-love movement and how I love, <laughs> love, love. We talked about this actually. We did a video about Allie B. Stuckey and her shitty book. If you haven't watched it, I'll put it in the eye. But I love that we are just coming right out and admitting that you're endorsing a, a book that you haven't read. <laughs> but also, I, when Paul says like it's purposeful, like, okay, if you think it's purposeful, what's the purpose? Please elaborate. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Purposeful, how? Like, what, what, what is your, understanding of what this is supposed to be doing. No, it's just not biblical. It's just not biblical. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take care of yourself and that you shouldn't be confident in who you are as a daughter and son of the father, but there's a difference between what cosmopolitan and like biblical self-love is. When I saw these pictures. Okay, so what's the difference? Please elaborate, Morgan. Please enlighten us because <laughs> <sighs> This is insane. Like, this is just insane. These issues in this magazine, I was like, this is so indicative of 2020. The hypocrisy, the madness. They push these things out, you know, the media, magazines, big influential people, and it's just like, okay, this is truth. If you think anything but this, you're the crazy person. You're the weirdo. You're the anti-science person. You're the hateful person. If you even question these things, okay, Cosmopolitan, this must be true. This is what healthy is because it makes me feel good in my body and it's healthy to me. People that are so pro-science and get on maybe conservatives for not going to science, and yet many of them would agree with this article or would agree on gender fluidity. That Yeah, let's talk about that, shall we? Because what they're trying to do is paint this picture of people who are not religious or people who are liberal, people who don't align with their worldview as being hypocrites and being like, of the devil. I'm assuming that's what Paul means when he says that it's purposeful. Maybe I'm putting words in their mouth, but my assumption here is that what he's trying to say is that Cosmopolitan and like the media, generally the libs, are trying to push the worldly view in this like worldview and set of values that are of the enemy. That's like Morgan's favorite buzzword phrase. And this... It, I'm not going to speak to like their biblical beliefs because I quite frankly don't care, but also it's not relevant from a science perspective in my opinion. But I think it's important for us to talk about the, what the, act, the research actually says here. Okay. I just opened seven of the like 21 tabs that I have saved um, to talk about this issue in particular, because if Paul wants to talk about the sort of hypocritical nature of 
pushing um, obesity. For, the reason I keep doing this is because obesity is a very stigmatizing term. Please stop fucking using it. Just call people fat. Don't go around calling people fat if you don't know that they like the term fat, but I prefer to use the term fat to describe myself because it's just a neutral descriptor. I don't take any offense to being called fat. Um, you can't hurt me with the word fat because I am. I'm fat, I have brown hair, I am also short. Those are just physical descriptors of myself. But if Paul wants to really try and point out the um, what he thinks is hypocritical nature of promoting people uh, existing in whatever body weight and size and shape works best for them as being like unhealthy and also um, caring about COVID restrictions. Let's talk about what the research actually says. There is a very well documented phenomenon in people who engage with diet culture, which is this process of trying to intentionally lose weight for the purpose of aesthetics or for health called weight cycling. This is something that happens a lot because the research also tells us that 95% of people who try to lose weight intentionally will gain that weight back within five years. Um, sometimes people end up actually gaining more than what they initially lost. The statistics around permanent weight loss are pretty damning. It's not something that a lot of people are able to reliably do over the long term, which is by design. The diet industry is designed this way on purpose because if someone sold you a one size fits all diet that fixed your weight issues for the rest of your life, the diet industry is shit out of luck because now they have nothing left to sell you. So the diet industry is set up this way on purpose to keep you coming back for more. You buy a flat tummy tea, you lose weight for six months and then you gain it all back and you have to go back to Weight Watchers and then you try Nutrisystem and then you go to Beachbody and then you try this and then you do that and and then someone tells you that this 90 day program is going to change your life. And this is why people get sucked into the diet culture so easily and why we end up with things like weight cycling. Weight cycling is essentially the phenomenon when a person, their weight will like yo-yo back and forth. People call it yo-yo dieting too. But it is um, well documented in the research that this puts a person at risk for developing a number of different physiological issues and health problems. Let's look at some of them, shall we? Type 2 diabetes, eating disorders, hypothyroidism. There are a number of different physical ailments and mental ailments that you can end up with as a result of weight cycling that are detrimental to a person's health over the long term. And the research demonstrates pretty clearly that the safest thing that a person can do is to remain at a constant weight for a long period of time even if that weight is a higher weight than what is like recommended based on our uh, sort of current fat phobic recommendations about what a person's like healthy body weight should be. Far and away, it is a healthier, safer choice for you to allow your body to just exist the way that it is and to eat intuitively and to exercise consistently, joyfully, without hurting yourself in a way that feels attainable and approachable and to let your body live. Because when we do the thing where we force your body to try and look a certain way, we end up with this very aggressive up and down and up and down and up and down. That is not physically healthy for people. Do we need to address that? It's probably fine. The other part of this that I wanted to talk about that I am particularly well versed in because it's my area of expertise is the mental health and like illness part of diet culture. Consistent long-term dieting is detrimental to people's mental health and the way that they view themselves. I will put some text on the screen if I can find it after we're done recording, but people who engage with diet culture from a young age are statistically and disproportionately more likely to also develop eating disorders, um, which if you don't know are detrimental to your mental health and your physical health. We also know that weight stigma, like, you know, when we use the word shameful to describe somebody's fucking body size, makes people far less likely to visit the doctor's office and to utilize preventative care services and to like engage with the medical system generally because weight stigma is, exists in such uh, a prominent way in the medical field. People who are fat um, or perceived to be like overweight are much less likely to go and get the preventative care that they need. They're also much less likely to be diagnosed properly and receive the appropriate care that they deserve. And so these people end up with chronic illness and long-term health issues because they're A, not getting the health care that they deserve, but B, they're also much less likely to go to the doctor in the first place because going to the doctor is a fat person fucking blows. These are all things that are detrimental to people's physical health also, but we're not fucking talking about that, probably because it doesn't fit Paul and Morgan's narrative, but 
But also, I would be willing to bet because Paul and Morgan didn't do any fucking research to back up any of the fucking bullshit that's coming out of their mouths. And the thing about this that drives me fucking banana pancakes is that it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter to Paul and Morgan because here's the deal. Paul and Morgan will live most of their lives, if not all of their lives, with relatively standard size bodies. I guess I don't know that for certain, but as it is right now, Paul and Morgan exist in bodies that are readily and easily accepted by the majority of society. And so I do not understand the compulsive desire that thin and straight sized people have to weigh in on issues that have nothing to fucking do with you. It doesn't fucking matter if fat people are out here loving ourselves and embracing ourselves and empowering ourselves and each other. And there's still room for you. Trust me, rest assured that there will never be more space for fat people than there are for thin people. And so I promise you, Paul and Morgan, if you are watching this, rest assured that you can shut the fuck up about fat people and live the rest of your lives in your thin white people bliss and we will leave you alone because we don't want anything to fucking do with you anyway. All we are asking for is for people to literally stop trying to murder us, stop trying to ruin our lives, stop trying to stigmatize our very existence so much so that we're not allowed to take up space in places like the internet, in places like the doctor's office, in places like the cover of Cosmopolitan magazine. And we're just asking that you kindly fuck off into your corner of the world, your very large corner of the world that allows you to just exist readily, easily as you are. That's all we're asking. That's literally it. It's not a complicated or difficult ask. And I am perpetually frustrated by thin people be hit like look at this sad little look on Paul and Morgan's face. It's so upsetting. Now fat people and fat people exist. I'm so upset about it. Like, literally just go away. It's not hard. It I just I just don't understand. Let's watch some more. Any of them would agree with this article or would agree on gender fluidity, that men can be women, women can be men, men can have periods. I mean, there's obviously so many different levels on the spectrum. The year of hypocrisy, 2020. So I love that we're also throwing in a side of homophobia uh, with our fat phobia. That's cool. I was curious to see some people I follow if they were going to be tweeting about this. And sure enough, several of them were. <laughs> Candace Owens, she jumped into the mix by saying, she posted the two pictures and said, we must fight to protect the next generation of children who are being intentionally targeted and brainwashed with lies. Women can be men, question mark. Men can be women. And now obesity is healthy? No, it's not. Clinical obesity is the main cause of America's number one killer, heart disease. She went on and- This is what I'm saying. The argument that normalizing fat people just existing in a way that isn't self-shaming, like we're not out here <laughs> hurting ourselves and like self-flagellating because we just so happen to be fat, does not mean that we're out here like in our like sneaky white vans with a tub of Crisco, like shoving it down your kids' throats. Like we're not dying to make everybody else fat. Like that's not the goal. The goal is just for us as fatties who are already fat to just be allowed to have a seat at the table. We're looking for equity, not to like force everyone else to be fat. Like that's literally not how it works. And this rhetoric that normalizing fat people just existing and being happy means that we are trying to make everyone else that way is the same argument that they use to try and say that uh, that um, the LGBTQ community is like wrong and shameful because we're trying to brainwash people. Like, no, that's literally not it. Quoted something and then said, Cosmopolitan, you should be ashamed of yourself for trying to glamorize our country's number one killer. We'll get to some responses to Candace in just a moment. Morgan, overall thoughts? I mean, Candace can get a little bit, I think yeah. she is, she's totally okay with making triggering posts. Yes, she is. Was she over the top here with this one? I feel like she was pretty point blank there. I don't think it was like she was purposefully trying to be like, Ooh, I'm gonna poke at you. Like she was just like being very blunt of this is the truth. This is what is happening. It I also am just, like, I find it hilarious that they're talking about her as if they know her, like, as if they have Candace over for a Sunday dinner. Like, literally shut up. 
<laughs> Candace Owens doesn't even know that they exist. And Paul said, what do you think, Morgan? Do you think that Candace went over the line? Like, literally shut up. It's gonna make a lot of people really mad because so many people find their identity in the way they look, for worse or for better. Like, sure. There's a bug in my coffee and I just drink it, I think. <laughs> And so to hear that like your size is not necessarily healthy, is not healthy, that hurts. The pride in us like gets in the way of us hearing the truth and the enemy starts taking over and saying like, no, you're perfect the exact way yeah. you are. Um, and See, I told you, I told you, they're trying to spin this as fatness being a side effect of Satanism. No, that's not what it is. The other thing about this that's important for us to talk about is that I think Paul and Morgan are under the impression that fatness is a side effect of people who just have no willpower and are just out here like shoving Krispy Kreme in our mouth. <laughs> like, fatness is a side effect of a number of different things. Some people are just genetically predispositioned to be fat. Um, some people do have impulse problems. Some people do have like binge eating disorder and things like that. Not that those are the same, sorry. That sounded like I was lumping those together. Some people have impulse problems. Some people have binge eating disorder. Some people have genetic predisposition. Some people have chronic illness. Some people develop injuries that make them unable to exercise. Like bodies change and fluctuate in size and shape all of the time. And that's very normal. That's a very normal and healthy part of our anatomy as human beings. And it is not normal to expect that our bodies would look exactly the same even though we are consuming different foods every day, even though our activity level will differ every day at different phases of our life, even though we're going through different things physiologically, this is a normal part of being a human being. Um, and sometimes different phases of our life <laughs> include fatness. And so that's okay. Um, I very much disagree with people representing fatness as if it is only a side effect of poor moral character because that's not how it works. And some people have chosen to stop doing the thing where we shame ourselves and we hurt ourselves in order to try and achieve what society has told us is the only healthy option because this is the other thing too that like, Fatness for a lot of people is a result of trying to force ourselves to fit into this diet culture ideal. I would not be a fat person if diet culture had left me the fuck alone. If I was allowed to exist as a normal teenager who didn't endlessly compare my body to the bodies of other women and who wasn't talked about like an object by strangers on the internet and I was allowed to just eat intuitively and exercise intuitively, I would probably be a little bit fat, but I certainly would have a very different body type than I do now because the weight gain that I experienced in my early 20s was a direct result of healing my eating disorder and no longer participating in aggressive restriction. So when Paul and Morgan talk about doing the healthy thing and not being fat, I think they are very much misunderstanding why a lot of people are fat in the first place. And this is something that the research demonstrates very clearly. Eating disorder recovery often comes along with weight gain and we know that eating disorders are often a result of diet culture and excessive dieting, which comes about because thin people who won't shut the fuck up about other people's body sizes yam on about it on the internet and stigmatize people's bodies looking the way that they do. It's like a circular thing and it is so infuriating for people who live in bodies like mine to hear this argument over and over again and for people to be like, mm, if you would just be healthy, then we would leave you alone. And like, I am, I, we are, bitch. Like, what are you talking about? That, that is why I said, like, I'm going to show up in a very human way here because it's exhausting to explain this over and over again and for then people to go, no, and then just refuse to make space for other lived experiences that don't mirror their own. Or the lie of you have to be this size to be perfect. That's not what this is about. This is about being truly healthy. This is about caring for yourself and for others around you, for your future family, for your family, for the people that love you. Like this is a- You know what's not healthy is perpetuating an unhealthy relationship with oneself and modeling this shame-filled rhetoric around your body and around food and around exercise. 
about your health and your life and glorifying God as best that you can do within every aspect of your life through your health through your weight like it sounds so silly does God really care about how much a person weighs well I think God cares about whether or not we're relying on food to comfort us or we're turning to food when we're angry or we're turning to food for blah 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 right I <laughs> you guys are quick to point this out in the comments um, if I am not like spot on with the way that I quote the Bible so tell you what I will leave it up to you guys can someone please leave me the chapter in the verse in which God tells us that we shouldn't be using food to comfort ourselves can someone please leave that in there because I'm not aware of the verse in the Bible that explicitly says that we are not supposed to eat McDonald's or eat our feelings when we are sad because that seems like a reach. But also, again, this is a very thin person and uneducated person take this like diet culture belief that eating emotionally is a bad thing. Here's the truth. All eating is emotional. All eating has an emotional component to it because we feel things when we eat things. That's a side effect of being a human being. I don't know about you, but I feel very differently when I eat Dairy Queen versus when I eat Brussels sprouts. And depending on the day, sometimes I'm way more fucking excited to eat Brussels sprouts than I am to eat Dairy Queen. And that's a direct result of the stimuli in my environment of me being able to listen to my body and the skills that I've developed to be able to eat intuitively. But this is why like the the trope of like eating emotionally is a bad thing is literally such bullshit because a all eating is emotional but b sometimes eating is a valid coping skill and i'm not out here advocating that people develop a binge eating disorder or another eating disorder of any type however it is okay for us to honor that there are sometimes things that allow us to feel good and for some people that's exercise for some people that's food for some people that's sex for some people that's tv for some people that's social media for some people people that's being outside, for some people that's being inside. It's all about the intention with which we utilize those activities and the degree to which we are utilizing those activities. I've talked about that on the channel before. Coping and numbing are like on different ends of the spectrum and it's just about the way in which we're using them. And also for what it's worth, I think we should normalize <laughs> numbing being a side effect of being a human being too. We all do it and it's not to say that it's inherently shameful. Like again, we all do it and it's okay. It's just about learning how to honor the space in which we need to be able to do the work of like, okay, I'm numbing my things, maybe I should work on it. But this like rhetoric of like, we shouldn't be turning to food to comfort ourselves. Like why? Why, Morgan? Because the other thing about this is that when thin people do it, it's fine. When thin people do it, when they joke about eating pie because it's a funny pastime and it's like a funny haha, -ha, like I'm so quirky, I'm a thin girl who loves sweets, then it's cute, right? It's a fun character trait. But when a fat girl does it, it's grotesque. Why is that? Maybe it's like weight stigma or something. Rather than turning to the father and what happens when we turn to food for this reason or that reason, we gain weight because calories in, calories out. That's not fucking true. That shit's not true and it fucking pushes my butt <laughs> Weight gain is not a simple equation because again, all eating is emotional and someone's comfort food might be fucking celery, Morgan. You don't know, like, oh. This is just, the other thing about this too is that I wanna be clear. I'm not out here trying to give anybody nutritional or dietetic advice because I don't have a degree in nutrition or dietetics. There are a number of wonderful people who I follow on Instagram that are. Um, the Feel Good Dietitian is one. Liz Brinkman is another. She was my dietitian for a time. Love you, Liz. Thank you. Highly recommend their accounts if you're looking for specific advice about nutrition and dietetics. But these people have neither of those degrees and they're out here making very bold claims about nutrition as if they know what they're talking about and they do not. And I want to be clear, I'm not trying to speak about people's nutritional needs, but I am going to speak very clearly and with my full chest about the emotional impact of stigmatizing the way that we eat and feed ourselves and the way that we interact with food and diet culture because I I'm well versed in that, both on a personal level and a professional level. Again, Paul and Morgan have neither of those sets of expertise, so I'm not really sure why they feel emboldened to get on the internet and spew fucking diarrhea out of their mouths, but I guess that's where we're at. 
some of the top comments on Candace's post because this is this is good. There's comments on both sides of the aisle and it creates for good discussion. I'm gonna be honest, I straight up don't care about this. We are fast forwarding through the Candace Owens section of this because it's trash. And also this video is very long already. Obese is still obese and it's still putting a lot of pressure on your body and it is not as healthy as if you were the right weight. Something that I know that I personally struggled with a while ago, um, like a year ago, was I was gaining weight and I didn't understand why because it didn't feel like I was eating a lot. I was like, I'm surely not eating that much. But then I did this program where they had me write down everything, like everything that went into my mouth for like a month. And I paid attention and like was like, what? I did not know that's how many calories were going into my body. I didn't realize I was eating that much food. And that is why I began to gain weight. I feel like the majority of people who have gained weight and are at a place of whether it's obesity or you're just overweight and not at like your healthy weight for your body and shape. I think it is like, it's a mental thing of, we don't even realize like when we're eating sometimes. There it is. This is why I said Paul and Morgan are under the impression that fatness is a side effect of lack of willpower and just being a complete and total fucking dumbass. A, I want to be clear, the technique that Morgan described of writing down everything that you're eating, how much you're eating, the calories that you're eating, that's a recipe for developing an eating disorder and I highly want to discourage anyone from participating in that behavior. Apps like MyFitnessPal and, and Weight Watchers and Noom and all of these things are so dangerous because you can so, so quickly get sucked into this worldview of becoming very obsessed with intake and output and, and all of the calories and the counting and the numbers. And those are things that we know are like the prominent risk factors for developing an eating disorder. And so especially if you are struggling with feeling some type of way about your body, about your weight, very much I want to encourage you to stay away from those types of things. Do not follow Paul and Morgan's advice about that. But also, again, just because Morgan, as a thin person, doesn't understand anything about nutrition or dietetics does not mean that all fat people are a result of the same type of ignorance that Morgan is privileged enough to possess. And so it is very frustrating, again, for Morgan to use her personal, Morgan's personal lived experience as a way to justify her shitty and shameful world beliefs. We don't realize how much food we take in sometimes. It pays off to be a little bit more disciplined in that area. I'm not saying become obsessed, and I know that there are people who struggle with that. Well, and I would I would say there we're not trying to be overly sticklers on what the perfect weight should be for you. There right. is a range. You can be on the thin side, you can be a little bit thicker, but there's a healthy range, and that's what scientists nutritionist would they agree on there's a healthy range healthy range for your height but then once you get beyond that healthy range significantly heavier than your healthy range that's when it becomes concerning so that's all we're encouraging and guys not that it matters that much but for the record i am certified as a health and nutrition specialist i've worked in that field for a little while i'm not currently but i have so like i have spent some time on this stuff <laughs> Well, okay, so the part that Paul neglects to inform us of in this video is that his health and nutrition specialist, um, which is not a real fucking thing, by the way, I checked. As far as I'm aware, Paul doesn't have any relevant training or degrees. He's not attended any kind of formal school. There's no, <laughs> like, evidence-based institution that's granted this man any kind of, like, formal education. His dad runs a workout program his daddy runs a little little like offshoot of like 21 day fix essentially um but his papa runs a little eating <laughs> disorder <laughs> god damn it you can't laugh like that paul's papa runs a little eating disorder clinic um and that's where paul got his like eating nutrition specialist thing from i'm pretty sure because um, again, as far as I'm aware, he doesn't list that credential anywhere. He doesn't provide us any opportunity to verify those credentials is real. It's not listed in the description of any of their videos. It's not listed in any of their three Instagram accounts. I can't find anything. This man doesn't have a LinkedIn because he's not a real professional. Um, and so I have no idea what he's speaking about, but it's certainly not listed anywhere that I can find. And so I'm going to go ahead and take that credential and put it in the trash where it belongs. I find it really interesting. And your dad is a health My, and weight loss coach he, specialist. He is. Dude. <laughs> so I've, I've been around it for a while. All right, Morgan, here's another one of the top comments on Candace Owens' tweet. What is most. If anyone tries to give you nutrition advice because they're a weight specialist dude, run away. 
run so far and then take a nice rest because your body deserves to rest and you deserve to listen to your body intuitively. What's concerning about this false message is that obesity puts you at a much higher risk for all illnesses, including COVID-19, mm -hmm. as we already talked about. We should be promoting healthy habits, encouraging everyone to get as healthy as they can to prevent COVID, this is completely irresponsible. Another one similar to that says this, ugh, we are all up in arms over the number of deaths from COVID-19, but heart disease kills around 800,000 people in America every single year, and we promote what leads to it. I mean, guys, these are like tough comments to read, especially for some who are struggling with this, and we're not discounting the struggle. The struggle is real. It is real. It is. But let's not ignore this either, and let's not act like this This isn't reality. I find these comments kind of refreshing, even though they're hard-hitting. Sometimes hard-hitting is needed. And I literally thought about this the other day, Morgan. I was walking... Okay, so first of all, that's false. But second of all, let's talk about this rhetoric that tough love is sometimes needed. We know that this is not true, actually. And again, the research supports that this is the opposite of what we should be doing because we know that when healthcare providers, not that Paul is a healthcare provider, but we know that when people who actually have real education participate in the perpetuation of weight stigma, that fat people are far and away less likely to utilize healthcare services, which can then manifest in a whole host of long-term impacts on their physical health. Sorry if you can hear our dog, it's almost dinner time. And so again, there is a disparity in terms of the healthcare that fat people are provided, which again, manifests in poor health outcomes overall but not because fatness makes us ill, but because the medical industry is fat phobic and refuses to provide us with the care that we deserve. This is why it's so important to look at the appropriate research for the actual cause of the issue and not just look at the symptom and then think backwards and make our own conclusions about why that's happening, which is exactly what Paul and Morgan are doing. Squishy. I was walking her on the sidewalk and I thought to myself, what if Squishy were to suddenly dart out into the road while a car was coming? What would I do? I would jerk her back and it might be a little bit uncomfortable on her neck because I'm getting her out of the way from the car tire that's going to kill her. I feel like there's some similarities here in American culture where so much of don't do anything that would hurt, don't do anything that would offend, just like they worded it here, their personal journeys to reclaiming healthy as their own. Kind of like, what's your personal journey? Because we're going to accept that. But if you are headed towards harm, what is the loving thing? It is to warn somewhat aggressively some of these comments they're kind of in your face. They almost sound a little bit cold. Sometimes that's needed. Here's I know that this man did not just compare all of humankind to his dog because that's categorically not the same, but also as the person who has two degrees and thousands of hours of experience in behavior modification and in helping people achieve goals in their behaviors, I feel qualified to weigh in on this issue. Uh, fucking no, no. That's not how you do it, Paul. Um, I'm really comfortable refuting that. Um, that's not how it fucking works. There's actually a whole ass modality that was developed for helping people <laughs> alter their behavior um, when they struggle to like put rubber to road with the goals. It's called motivational interviewing. It was actually developed specifically for medical professionals in assisting with things like smoking cessation and other um, sort of like typical problem behaviors at the doctor's office because doctors are typically pretty fucking bad at creating motivation for <laughs> behavior modification. But again, this is something that therapists are especially skilled at. And one of the things that we know is that when we provide a safe place with compassion and empowerment and a shame-free space, that people begin to change. Because more often than not, people, when there is an identified behavior change that they want to happen, they are willing to get there. It's just usually that there is fear or there are barriers or there are things that are getting in the way. And so the role of the helping professional is to figure out how we can identify those, how we can remove those and how we can overcome those. None of that involves <laughs> browbeating a person into like forcing them to change their ways. Like that's never helpful. The thing that I say to my clients all the time is that people don't do better when they feel worse. And that's like such an old school way of thinking that you can just beat people into submission by being mean to them. And that's never how it works. Because even if you achieve the behavior modification, all you've done is instill a deep feeling of shame and the person has modified their behavior out of fear and out of shame and out of self-loathing. And that will manifest in different outcomes later on. And it cripples a person's ability to show up authentically with a sense of vulnerability. And there are all different types of impacts that that creates relationally, uh, on a self-esteem level, on a mental illness level, like just, it's never good. 
an interesting comment responding to Matt Walsh, who shared one of these pictures. They said, the whole point is how it may be healthy for self-esteem. It is not for cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So they're shifting it and they're saying, this is for the self-esteem of the women who are heavy, who are obese. There's something to be said for it, mental health, obviously, and en encouragement and self-esteem, removing the shame. What do you think about that? Why is our self-esteem placed higher than our self-sacrifice for the Father? Why is feeling good about ourselves and the way we look and the way we feel placed on a higher pedestal and pride? priority than what we're willing to lay down for the father. This is something that I will just never understand and I cannot get behind because it's healthy, because we know that it allows people to live their fullest lives, because the research indicates that it's the safest thing to do, because the research indicates that when people overall have a low self-esteem, um, have a poor attachment to themselves, to their primary caregivers, to the people around them, that they struggle to develop healthy relationships, that they struggle to engage fully in their lives, that they are at an increased risk for a number of different scary behaviors, including self-injury and self-harm, and control Zing their lives. There are a number of different issues that come along with poor self-esteem and self-image and it's very important for us to honor that as real. And the other issue with this is that not all people are fucking religious, Morgan. It's okay for people to not be religious. And also it is okay for religious people to value their self-esteem. Every time we do a video talking about Girl Defined or Paul and Morgan or another assorted fundy, there are so many of you wonderful and beautiful people in the comments who are sounding off and letting me know like, hey, I am a Christian or I am a religious person, and I don't believe this. Like I go to therapy and I value my mental health and I value my self-esteem and my self-image and I'm also religious. And those two things for me go hand in hand. My relationship with God makes me feel good about myself and it helps me to feel more invested in my life. And I just cannot understand why Paul and Morgan perceive that to be a bad thing. Like I, I genuinely don't get it. And again, I'm not a religious person. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a godless heathen who just is confused and, and lost. I'm sure that's probably what they think of me, but I just, or what they would think of me anyways, but I just don't understand why someone would use their very large platform to actually say out loud that we should sacrifice our mental health for God that's dangerous, that's irresponsible, that's abusive, that's toxic. And it is just, it's shocking. Honestly, like it's disgusting. I'm sorry, it's disgusting. The sacrifices that we're willing to make for the father. I'm talking to you guys about this, like right in the middle of the storm. This sounds stupid, but like, I haven't even told Paul this, but I felt like the Lord revealed to me recently that I idolize sleep. Like, I just love sleep. And I'm like, ew, the idea of waking up early to pray and worship the Father sounds horrible. God just recently was like, pew, pew, pew. no, <laughs> like, stop. You don't need sleep. You need me. You need time with the Father. You get plenty of sleep. He knows you need sleep. Right. But God knows that I need sleep. You don't need the but excess. But I don't need 10 hours of sleep. I don't need the excess. And that's our problem. That's it. The excess. It's, it's the excess. We want the excess sleep, of things. Sleep is not bad. Food is obviously not bad. It's the excess. A lot of Americans mm -hmm. operate in excess and it can be a number of things. So we're not just, I mean, food is the topic of today, but sex, excess of sex outside of the, you know, God given marriage covenant. Oh my God. <sighs> I've said it before and I will say it again. This is the closest that I will ever get to feeling pity for these people. That's absolutely crushing that Morgan feels like God is telling her that she's not allowed to sleep as much as she wants to. Don't get me wrong. I know that some people have sleep disorders and there are, I mean, I'm not a medical doctor and so I'm sure that there are different issues with sleeping too much, but I am inclined to believe that if, if a person is tired, there's wisdom in honoring what your body is trying to tell you. And the same follows with food and exercise. If exercise is hurting, there's wisdom in honoring that your body is trying to tell you to stop. If you are hungry, there's wisdom in honoring that your body is trying to tell you to eat. If you are full, there's wisdom in honoring that your body is telling you to stop. I don't understand this rhetoric of just turning off 
your bodily impulses and listening only to God. What is that? That's wild to me. Also, I love that Paul said excess of sex, but it's uh, not in marriage. The only outside of marriage. No such thing as too much sex in marriage. Am I right, guys? Like fucking ew, Paul. Excess. Mm -hmm. Excess with sleep, like Morgan mentioned. Excess of alcohol. So many things. Sure. Of TV, and of social media. Part of that is living in a first world country where it's me, 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 self-centered. Give yeah. it to me now, immediate gratification. As the word says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And yet so many of us are getting swept up in the patterns of this world. So to finish what I'm saying, I believe that if you and I could stop worrying so much about ourselves, stop worrying so much about how we feel, what we want, about what satisfies our fleshly desires, and just say, God, you know so much better. Be willing to sacrifice things. We think that we... No, 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 we're done. We're not watching the rest of that. There's three minutes and 40 seconds left and I'm pretty sure it's mostly them promoting their Patreon and talking about religious bullshit and I have had it. I don't care, quite frankly. And I am done platforming these people because this is offensive, this is gross, this is disgusting. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. I don't even know what to say anymore like I'm emotionally exhausted from watching this because again I think it is just a testament to how much more work there is to be done and why this Cosmo article was necessary in the first place. If this Cosmo article is creating this strong of a reaction in people, I think that's a sign that fat people are still very much not allowed a seat at the table. And again, I cannot and will not understand why equity and equality feels like oppression to people with privilege. It's so fucking annoying to me. It's frustrating. <laughs> Pisses me off. Oh, and it's just fucking aggravating. I very much want to encourage anybody who is watching this video that you are allowed to have room to breathe with your relationship with your body and with food. And again, I am not a nutritionist, I am not a registered dietitian, and I am not qualified to give anyone advice <laughs> about what you should or should not be putting in your body. However, I am qualified to give education about what happens when our relationship with food and our relationship with our body can go awry. And I can very much testify again on a personal and professional level that the impacts of that are detrimental. And so when people with large public platforms are out here advocating for things that manifest in very detrimental and very unsafe outcomes, especially when this content is marketed at like young vulnerable people, it's irresponsible, it's inappropriate, it's disgusting, and it is just wrong. Like, it's wrong. Like, pure and simple, it's not okay. I, again, I'm gonna give the same caveat on this video that I give on all of the other fundamentalist videos. Please do not go and subscribe to their channel, even if it's just a hate watch. Please do not watch their videos. Don't click their videos. Don't comment or engage. Don't follow them on social media, because all it does is feed the algorithm and provide them with more exposure, with more engagement. It also gives them a leg to stand on um, in terms of accepting sponsorships and things like that. So there are lots of commentary channels that unpack their content and talk about them generally. So I would encourage you to seek out their content in other means if it's something that you're interested in. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I know that this was um, a bit of an angry rant for today, but it seems like you guys enjoy when we talk about Paula Morgan. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are um, in a kind and respectful way, please. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye. Thank you.